Today we're going to do a complete video on the installation and review one of my favorite panels. The Square D 200 amp 42 space SC42M 200 PS. It has a 225 amp bus with a 200 amp main breaker making it capable of taking 70 amps of solar backfeed. Just the fact that it has a 225 amp bus makes it more heavy duty than the typical 200 amp panel and it's a comparable price to most of them. The one drawback is that it's only good for underground use at least in my area in Arizona. This review will be a bit longer than most due to the fact we're going to show a video of the complete installation. He's already been out, they disconnect the power from the lug. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is disconnect all these wires, get them pulled out, and then we've got all the grounds out here. We're going to disconnect all of them and uh, take this off and straighten all these wires out to get them in a long straight bundle there. Okay, I wanted to show you the new panel I'm going to put on though first. Um, it's a square D panel. The number is a SC42M200PS. And I really like this panel. And it's got a 225 amp bus, so if they decide they want to put solar on it, they can add up to 70 amps worth of solar uh, onto this panel without having to upgrade again. And frankly, it's just as reasonable in price as a standard 200 amp I would get from Eaton or Siemens or anybody else. And this is just the right panel for this job. I don't necessarily promote anybody. You know, Square D, Siemens, Cutler Hammer, I use them a lot. They're all for specifically different reasons. Uh, this one is only good for underground. You have to check your area. I'm in the Southwest, so uh, our panels are on the outside of the house. But um, anyway, now I'm going to take the panel apart. I'll set it over here and go through a few things on the inside of the panel before we uh, strip this one off and stick this one on. Okay, this is how the panel comes out of the box. We're going to go ahead and take it apart in front of you so you can see exactly what, uh, what goes along with the job. First of all, we'll, we've already taken the screws out of this. We'll set this on the side. Thank you. Okay, so this is basically how the panel works. We've got our two hot lugs, a 110 or 120 volt line will go there, and a 120 line will go there. This is where the neutral goes, it's grounded to the panel, comes over and hits this bus bar, which also is connected to both ground bars on both sides. At the main panel, the grounds and neutrals can be connected. When you go to a sub-panel, you have to separate them. And that's so nobody gets shocked off that ground wire. Okay. So, the power comes in here. There's a space behind here. And then the power goes from here. The linkage goes up, across, and down in, and feeds into this breaker. Okay. In turn, when the breaker is on, it'll feed down and hit this alternating bus. You got one bus that's every other one of these, and the other bus is the other, the opposite phase. Okay, and that's about it. Um, our riser, our power coming from the power company is gonna sit right on top of this. We've got some holes in the back for the wires that are coming out of the house, and we'll measure this stuff out a little bit and see from the center of this riser how far the wires are from the center of that riser to where they come out of the wall and we'll find the best location here. Sometimes we have to cut a new hole on this one. It's a frame house and it shouldn't be much of a problem. All right, we're gonna take off the old panel. Okay, we're about halfway done taking these wires out over here. I don't know if you can see, but right here we've got a two and a half inch um, bushing that they're bringing all their wires out into and they twist them all up and stuff. We're going to spend a while just straightening everything the way back it was from the get-go. Um, once we get that done, let me find a tape measure. 
show you what I mean about where we're going to knock our hole for our new panel. So it is six and a half inches from the center of where the wires come out of the home to the center of where the riser pipe comes up out of the ground. So we're going to find the same six and a half to, well, anywhere from five to eight inches. We can do a knockout and make our hole behind here a little bit bigger if we need to. All right, we'll I'll start up again when we get all these wires out and straightened up. Okay, I told you anywhere from five to eight inches over there for that panel to match up. We're gonna come over here and from the center of our first hole there, over here to the center of the riser, which is right here, we've got eight inches, so that's gonna be perfect. We're gonna knock that knock out right there and put a bushing in there and uh, it should slap right on the same spot on the wall. Okay, you can see we've got the bushing in the back there now. We're gonna pull these screws off the bottom here and mount the base for the hub. You can see on this panel that it's already got pre-drilled holes for mounting on the home which we typically use. Typically in this corner of the house, they've got a piece of plywood uh, for shearing that is good you know, for mounting it. We always try and find at least two that'll hit the studs. And we use these uh, three inch, where's the screws at? We use these long three inch tech screws, so We've got an inch of foam, then we go through a half inch of plywood, and then we're into our stud, so we still get a couple inches into the stud with these. Now, when we're dealing with a concrete or block house, we use these tech screws that are made for mounting into concrete. We've taken out the toggle bolts this panel was mounted with, and all our wires are tightly bound together so we're going to remove the old panel now. Three things to coordinate placing the new panel on the wall. The utility wire entrance, the home wiring bundle, and the underground pool circuit. Now it's just a matter of aligning the panel on top of the riser, leveling it out, and fastening it to the wall. This panel happened to go onto a block wall, so we used our Tapcon concrete anchors. Here's our new panel on the wall. You can see the bundled wires and the pipe going underneath to the pool have been reinstalled. The utility wires are on and our new hub has been installed. And our new concrete screws have secured the panel to the wall. Now the panel's been installed and we're ready to Undo what we've done, untape our wires and start connecting them to the bus. It's time to reconnect our neutrals and grounds and get ready to install our breakers. Here's a quick shot showing the neutrals and the grounds attached to the ground bar in the main panel. Here we have a few of our 240 volt breakers installed. All of our breakers are installed and our den front has been labeled. The panel has passed both city and utility inspections. The power has been restored. I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe below.